Yes, you guys, welcome back. In today's video, we have some stories to discuss and dissect. Learn the latest news surrounding players wanting to steal the path of club this summer. Next on, I will focus entirely on midfield players. All these players and much more. Hope you guys definitely enjoy. Smash that like button. And before I get into anything, I need to get one big plug out the way first. I want to say thanks to Profit Accumulator for sponsoring today's video. Profit Accumulator are our website that teach you guys how to make more money using a system called match betting. What's match betting? Is it gambling? You guys don't worry, you've got nothing to worry about. Match betting is not gambling and here's why. It covers all outcomes so you know the profit you're going to get before placing a bet. Now this is one of the most popular side hustles of 2021 and it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Now we know the gambling industry is extremely competitive. They're constantly competing with crazier and crazier sign up offers. And this is where Profit Accumulator comes through because they have a dedicated team that assess all offers and presents it back to you. That then allows you to use the offers against one another so you can build that steady, steady profit. Over 150,000 people have already signed up. And if you guys use my link in the description below, you sign up for free, which means that you don't fill in any credit card details. Literally sign up so you can use a tutorial where Profit Accumulator will give you the step-by-step -step play of how to take advantage of their site and of course help you come out ahead of the bookmakers what are you guys waiting for try it out yourselves for free i'm telling you you're going to be surprised by this one yeah you'll find a link below in the description so now we turn our attentions to the london history podcast they regularly have on matt law the independent writer you get tons of great insight and of course i'm going to suggest you guys will download it yourselves you'll find a link in the description but i'm going to focus on one of the key points of that podcast and that was when he spoke about potential player departures. Now, there were three guys who were maybe um, not as settled at the club right now, weren't too happy by their roles and lack of minutes. One I definitely knew was Hakim Ziyech. I guess potentially his situation could be evolving now. And the other two, Pulisic and Timo Werner. I, I don't think it's much of a surprise at all, to be honest. Of course, I discussed Pulisic's quotes yesterday, um, talking about how there's some of the mental struggles, um, you know, of course, being appreciative of minutes, but then maybe not being as happy because you can't play your best football and your best game. It seems like Timo Werner as well is, you know, a bit indifferent towards things at this point in time. And he would want to leave in the summer too. Um, for me, I just give my thoughts and opinions straight away. I've got nothing against these guys, I'll be real with you. And I do like Pulisic more than, of course, Timo Werner. But I'm okay with this, to be honest with you. I think Timo, at the time when Lampard signed him, I understood tactically the role he was going to play. No surprise that Timo started off his form quite well too at the club. However, with how they're playing right now, emphasis ball and technical ability, and with the emergence now of your Hudson and Dorius, your ZX, and potential new signings at Dembele in the future too. I, I definitely feel like Werner alongside your Jorginho's and others are the types of profiles you can cash in on to reinvest back in the squad. He has a ton of interest still back in the Bundesliga. You still can get your money back. And I'm sure clubs won't even be deterred by the fact that he didn't necessarily bang in the goals for us because I'm sure their scouts and their systems and the coaches know that we don't necessarily get the best out of our attacking players regardless. Um, moving on to someone like Christian Pulisic, Honestly, I get like Robin vibes and I don't mean in the sense of like uh, comparing just how good they both were. Robin did more for us, let's keep things real. But my comparison comes from the fact that if Pulisic does go, I'm always going to feel like we didn't really ever see the full, full capabilities of him. We got glimpses in that first season and unfortunately due to the new system and the way we transitioned from, we haven't been able to see Pulisic play his best football in his best position for like nearly over 12 months, which, um, you know, it's a bit frustrating in that sense. We know what he can bring to the team too. It's a bit of a surprise that that skill set hasn't been used enough, even though there's been many a time where it should have been used, in my opinion. But for his sake, it's best for him to go to a club where he will play his best football for him to achieve his potential. I mean, it's not just any player. This is the hope of America big rep for a long time great player too in his own right we can't just start um, forgetting some of the things he's done for us too but reality is, is that i think we have to find players that um of course number one suit our two cool plays and of course if players are unhappy then we have to do the right thing and of course move them on um how do you guys feel about this team of Werner Pulisic do you want them to still stay or would you prefer if other players left instead let us know below so for me a player that can most definitely accelerate things is Aurelien Schwemeni we do have some updates surrounding him at this point in time now 
Of course, a player like him, with his potential, his ability, um, the fact he even won Liga and Young Player of the Year award last season, it was only natural that as he was to grow, his value was going to grow even more. Reports are now saying that Monaco want between 80 to 100 million euros to sell their prized asset. And if that doesn't get even worse, we now have Real Madrid who see him as the perfect successor to Casemiro. And with Madrid looking to sign Mbappe and do some serious business in the summer, ah, competition just got harder, but I guess it's natural. And I'm always going to blame Scott McAcklin for, you know, deciding that he needed another 12 months. I honestly don't know why, to be honest. Within those 12 months, his value was just going to go to the next level. Regardless though, reports are saying today that Thomas Tuchel sees Flamini as his number one guy, as that main guy that he needs to see for next season. Now, this report does come from Master, which does give this story a bit more reliability. Of course, Flamini and Kunde share the same agent. We know Kunde should have been signed for us last summer. He seems destined to sign for us next summer as well. And he also happens to be best friends with Flamini. Now, they've said that alongside talks with Kunde, we've held multiple talks with his agent in Jonathan Kebe to, of course, prepare for a future move for Flamini. Uh, I think, for me, if you're looking to sign someone like him, it's going to sound a bit harsh. I don't mean to, but you kind of have to let someone like a Jorginho go to tell Flamini, listen, you know, we have everything you need at this club to succeed. You follow in the footsteps of your Michael Lessians, your Kante's, your Makalele's great holding players that came from League 1 and we see you next in line. That's what you do to try and persuade them to sign because with other competition coming from your Real Madrid who will have money to spend as well too. Having the chance to link up, play with some world-class players as well. I mean, it's going to be difficult. And I know we have another issue on top of the price tag, but listen, you guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah? Clubs like us, you have to spend big to get the best players. You know, we're not, we're not Tottenham. Um, sometimes you have to splash out big on certain players. You can't be trying to get low fees for anyone and everyone because we miss out in the end. And otherwise we end up in these panicky situations where we overspend on, on duds or, or players that shouldn't even cost anywhere near that valuation because we've been too long slipping on deals we should be getting done. For me, Tremeni is worth for 80 mil. Of course, he's, I've been saying this guy is a future world-class midfield player. World-class mids don't cost you 30 pounds. You know what I mean? So let's hope we get this deal done. If that even involves a Kunde capture to just persuade Tremeni to sign with this boy too, let's pray that happens, you guys. Because for me, this is a guy I have to see for next season. So right now, we move on to the next story. So now we move on to the next story and it's time to talk about the latest news surrounding Frankie de Jong. Now, our interest in him is real, it's not fake. Uh, a while back, I released a video discussing Barcelona making an inquiry for Christian Pulisic with our counts offer being wanting Frankie de Jong as part of any deal. Reports have come out over the past few days as well, suggesting that a 33 million offer had been made. However, Barcelona want 50 mil to actually release Frankie de Jong. And it seems like they're quite willing to maybe sacrifice him, use that money to reinvest back in their squad with, uh, you know, arrivals now of your Javis, your Pedris, uh, um, your Gonzalez's as well. It seems like Barcelona already have the profiles they need that can grow and be those players they need in the future. For me though, I can tell you guys this. The number one man behind our strong interest in Frankie de Jong, a man who absolutely loves him, is none other than Scott McAcklin. Um, he is really hoping that we can get this deal done to sign him. Don't get me wrong, Frankie de Jong is a great player. However, this team needs a DM. And Frankie proved at Barcelona he is not no lone six. When he was balling at Ajax, they used a pivot system. Frankie de Jong, the six on the left-hand side. And that's how they were able to play. A player like Frankie, for me, is stylistically quite identical to a Kovacic. You know, players who are amazing at progressing the ball from deep. You know, they need that license to be able to roam, to carry the ball further. When you play as a DM, though, compared to that type of profile that De Jong plays, there's a lot more discipline behind your game. You know, you have to be in the right positions. A lot of times, that means, unfortunately, that the angles to dribble past opponents to play through them don't necessarily open up due to that discipline in which you have to play with. For me, it doesn't make sense for us to have two covers in the squads. I'm not too sure personally. Frankie hasn't really excelled in different uh, midfield roles at Barcelona. His best role, that double pivot six. For me, it could work here, but I just think that with the profiles we have with many books to books mids that can get those goals, I don't want to sign a guy who's not really a holding six 
meaning that we have to do what we always do and the team has to then mitigate some of those personal weaknesses that players possess. I think we have to move away from that. We have to turn to the market to actually sign these guys to fill holes tactically that players in the squad can't do right now. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't personally see him. He's a great player. I think he makes more sense out of Bayern Munich that will use that pivot system there. Maybe a replacement for, um, of course, Kimmich in the future as well too. When it comes to Scott's judgment, you guys, you know that I can be a bit critical with some of these signings. I'm still fuming that um, he decided against Clemeni for another season. I don't know why. I think you've already shown already since he's a teen, since making his name at Bordeaux, that this guy was one of the next best young players in the field to watch out for. And I guess when it comes to Scott's uh, way of signing players, you know, he emphasizes a lot on data analytics. That is Scott McCacklin's thing. They combine um, live scouting with video assessments and advanced performance metrics that all facts into decisions to sign players. A lot of times though, it does seem like a little bit of like a money ball approach where it's like, okay, here's a player whose market value has decreased now. You know, our, our system, our data shows us that there's still more life to this player. What's the risk in signing him for below his market value, knowing that there's a big chance that he can achieve his potential? Um, the reality is that just hasn't happened with any of the players you've signed from your Barclays to your Emersons, etc, etc, etc. And I guess one of the main reasons behind that is that maybe the system they end up playing in doesn't necessarily get the best out of them. So even though Frankie de Jong's a great player, unless you're selling Kovacic to replace him, I'm sorry, I don't think he's the profile he necessarily needs. And I guess if Frankie comes, I guess you're also saying goodbye to Billy Gilmore that could also kind of play that role too. So. Let's see what happens with this story. I'm assuming we're going to see a lot more news surrounding Frankie de Jong in the future. And now, to end things, we discuss Jorginho. More reports coming out from Italy. Juventus are very serious about acquiring a top-class regista, that specific profile regista, in midfield for next season. Uh, since they've lost players like Paolo and Pjanic, they have not found the right replacements for them, and they are looking to strongly reinvest in their midfield for next season. At this point in time, Jorginho's contract does expire in 2023. And normally, the club enters contract extension talks when the player has 12 months left on their existing deals. So I guess naturally at this point in time, the club and Jorginho have not talked about extending his contract at this point in time. However, we have known for a while that in Jorginho's agent in Jao Santos, Jorginho still has personal ambitions, I guess, from all the interviews and quotes he said of potentially playing in Serie A again. After he won the Euros with Italy, Jorginho's agent said this over a possible return back to Serie A. As he said, obviously yes, when you win a European Championship with Italy, the next step can be to play in Italy. But now we don't get too hot. Everything changes in a short time. And I think, you know, I have to say, I think Jorginho's got a great agent. I think when you assess Jorginho's entire like career plan, he's made the right moves at the right time, just going upwards and upwards and upwards. Uh, hence, last season when he won so many personal accolades, won big trophies in the Champions League and the European Championship too. However, my thing is though, with talks that Gallagher is returning for next season, with talks that we will sign a DM in the window too, is this maybe not the best possible time to cash in on Jorginho whilst his market value is still hot and he has a ton of interest? If you go to transfer market, his value is set at around 40.5 million uh, for a player that is 30 years old, so he won't be getting any younger as well too. And with us looking to maybe um, revolutionize our midfields for next season, I'd imagine you could earn a ton of money off Jorginho's sale and use that money to reinvest back in the squads. You know, Jorginho knows that at this age, going to Serie A Juventus, he can easily play for another five years for them. And yeah, I understand, I'm not sounding too sentimental. I mean, I do like Jorginho, I've always had a ton of respect for him, but I think you guys know that when I have like a vision in mind and when I feel like for the squads and team to be fully united and strong, I do feel like we have to acquire certain specific players in the team to allow us to be a better, more competitive team. If that involves having to let players move on at the right times in order to achieve this and make this happen and accelerate things, then for me, it's what you have to do. 